So restorative justice is, is something that schools and juvenile justice and families and communities have been searching out for, for a long time. Um, I've been doing this work for since 2009 in a lot of different venues um, and been working in the Puget Sound area since 2012 after I got my master's in education policy. I realized that there's a need for support for schools and for juvenile justice systems and for communities and families to engage in conflict in a more healthy way. So typically what we do is we, we sort of ignore conflict or we overpower conflict and you see that with teachers and parents alike um, telling kids not to fight, telling kids you know move, separate each other and that doesn't give anybody the good conflict skills that they need to engage in this work and so we believe that if we kind of walk toward it and engage in conflict in a healthy way, we can come out the other side stronger and better connected. So there's a, there's a quote, Brene Brown, she, she talks about shame, right? Shame is the intensely powerful feeling or experience of believing we are flawed and therefore unworthy of acceptance and belonging. To believe we are flawed and unworthy of acceptance and belonging, to believe we are flawed and not worthy of being in school, this isn't the place for me, is a message that we send to young people when we suspend them. And when we send that, young, that message to young people of color who have heard that message from multiple different sources, that's how they, they start to perceive that. They start to believe that in them, that that's how they are. They don't belong in school. So with restorative justice, we're really taking that and leveraging that conflict and saying, you know what, this was hard, and we want to sit down, and you belong here, and we love you, and this isn't okay, so what do we need to do next? One of the principles of restorative justice for us is really empower the author and the victim. And empowerment looks like, this is what happened, you've taken responsibility for that career, now what do you need to do? But then later, after they've done some work, after they've done a project, they've presented it to another classroom, they've taken some accountability in front of their class, or amongst a, a small group of peers, something like that, they feel like, oh, I have value here, I bring something to the table. And when we can take, and this is what I mean, like when we leverage conflict, we can take that pretty hard, challenging event, situation of conflict, of a fight, of theft, whatever, and then leverage it on their strengths, where they're on the outside saying, on the other side of that saying, I can do some good in the world. That's, that's a huge win.